What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the marketing tools and tactics and tips that I use to bring in $10,000 a month. Some of these tactics or most of these tactics are gonna be tactics that I actually used um, in the very, very beginning and some of them will be newer um, tactics that are gonna be relevant with today's marketing. So the first thing that you wanna do obviously is have a dope website. I always use Shopify because Shopify has the best backend. A lot of people who have high volume e-com stores use Shopify. So the first thing that I did on Shopify is use high quality photos and a great template. High quality photos are important because it, because it gives you a lot of brand integrity. And as you guys have seen in the previous video that I recorded is a lot of the wholesalers in downtown LA allow you to use their high quality photos if you go ahead and just ask. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll so, uh, front is like this. It's, it's loose yeah. and then yeah, the side. Loose. Okay. Yeah. No. It's really nice. Yeah. Now, when I buy from the store, do you allow to use your photos or do I take my own? Uh, you can what? I can send you. Okay, so yeah. you have photos that. Okay, so you have photos that I can use, but of course I take my own as well. Yeah. Okay. If you guys want information on the wholesalers that I use, you guys can go ahead and watch my video and click here. The next thing that I use to add credibility and integrity to my site is a size chart and also size videos. For me as a consumer, I also look at things that I like from websites and what makes me buy. Stores like Pretty Little Thing and Misguided use actual sizing videos so that you can actually see it on the model and the way it moves. And that always just adds a little bit extra of um, trust to your customers. So those are things that I used as well as Shopify apps. Now the apps that I use that were the best were the upsell recommendations that basically are the things that say things that you might like under the actual product page or things that you don't wanna leave behind that are actually gonna be under the shopping cart page right before they exit or right before they buy as well as on the homepage when it's like the most popular items that people bought from this site. Another app that Shopify has that's super, super useful is the Abandoned Cart app. Now the Abandoned Cart app is basically for people who go through the whole entire process of going to buy the product and then right before they click buy, for whatever reason, they get out and they don't buy the product. So I know some of y'all have received those messages and you're like, how am I receiving the messages? How do they know? But hey, did you forget blah, blah, blah in your cart? You guys can go ahead and click this link and we'll give you 10% off or 15% off. Those marketing tools have a very, very, very high conversion rate and they allow your customers to buy. Now, a lot of customers don't buy because either the shipping or the shipping time. So giving that 10 to 15% off basically just makes them buy again and basically takes off of the original shipping price. And actually, before you bring anybody to your website, the first thing that you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna do, which I did not do in the past, um, because I didn't know about this, is but you're gonna wanna add a Facebook pixel. Now, what is a Facebook pixel? A Facebook pixel is a code that you actually put on your site, and it tracks every single thing that your consumers do. A lot of you guys might see little pop-ups like adding cookies. If you accept cookies, cookies is basically a tool where are able to retrack you down when you go on a, on a website. And I'm sure every single person watching this video has gone on a website, looked at something for a while, thought something was really, really cute, and then they go on Instagram or they go on Facebook or they go on Snapchat and they're scrolling and they see that exact same item. So that all roots for, from, um, I'm not gonna say all because I'm not sure if there's a different method of doing this, but that basically roots from a Facebook pixel. A Facebook pixel will track everything that your consumers do. So after you get um, traction on your store and you develop enough data and analytics from your Facebook pixel, you're gonna wanna run Facebook ads and Instagram ads if you guys do have the budget to work with that. Facebook and Instagram ads may seem annoying to consumers, but it generates a lot of sales. It's generated a lot of sales for me in the way that you're able to target an 18 year old girl in Los Angeles who likes pink bodysuits. Like you can literally market somebody down to color that they like um, as far as clothing goes, um, people that they like, um, size, um, interests, if they like beach things, if they like sports things. And those, those interests are important because if you have a beach-based product like a bikini, then you can attract all the people who are interested in that interest in Facebook. If you like somebody who's more focused into sports, then you can 
market products for sports, whether that's workout things, things of that nature to that exact person. Books that help me understand consumer behavior and why people buy are Decoding the New Consumer Mind by Kit Yarrow, Why We Buy by Paco Underhill, and Biology. These are the books that are gonna be very helpful for people who don't know anything about marketing and just understand what makes people buy, how to price your items, how to set up your website, colors to use, and things like that. If you guys have never tried listening to audiobooks to basically enhance your knowledge on business, you can get your first audiobook for free by going to www.audible.com slash findguru or you can text findguru to 500 500. Audible originals are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers in worlds as diverse as literature, journalism, theater, and more. So getting into the next phase and how you price your items. After you've basically understood why consumers buy, you can set your pricing accordingly. One super, super, super big tip is adding the shipping cost to the overall cost of the product. This this has helped so much um, with my abandoned cart app because nine times out of ten, if a c consumer sees something online for twenty dollars, they want to pay twenty dollars. I know we all been there. We go, we see that it's twenty dollars. We go to the shipping, and we nine times out of ten exit out because of the shipping cost. One tip that I've learned is I always just add the shipping cost to the overall cost of the product so that when people see $20, they're actually only spending $20. Having something as free shipping over X amount of dollars has also increased um, overall sales on the website and have also increased my conversion rates. Another thing that I touched on in my most recent video is private labeling. Private labeling, just to give you an overview, is something that was very beneficial for me because it's a marketing tool after the product is already sold. Adding your branding to your clothing will go such a long way because it allows other people to see your label on a product. They basically look at your company as an established brand, whether you are new or an OG in the game. So in my last video, I showed you guys my experience in shopping at Hey Babe. So what I'm gonna do is actually show you how I would private label this exact item. So I'm gonna take this item out of the bag and it, you know, it comes with the tissue paper, the bag, and everything marked. And then when you look inside, you can see the actual tag. And because I'm gonna be doing everything on my own, I'm gonna take my seam ripper here which is a tool that's necessary if you're going to be doing your own tags and basically just pop off the seams pop off the thread that attaches this label quick easy without um, damaging the actual product and then it peels off so after it's popped off i would then take my label and sew it here I actually did that off camera because it's mandatory. So now you can see the item that I did. I sewed on my actual label. I would then take my gun and then take my hang tag. My hang tag already has a pre-plucked hole or pre-plucked, is that the right word? So what I would do is I would take the label. I would take the gun I will put the gun through the hole first, then I would poke a hole through the label, make sure that my fingers are flat, and then shoot it out. Once I shoot it out, I pull it apart. And look at me, y'all. I'm cute, I'm branded, and I would just put the size on the actual item, as I did in this. There's another label here with the size small medium large just in case this sticker peels off so then now that i private labeled my own item by hand at home i would then take this item i would fold it up really nice i personally never kept mine in the plastic wrap i would put it in tissue paper and then i would seal it with my sticker that i got also um, with all of my branding on it and then i would put it in a cute little bag and then it's good to go so yeah, y'all, um, just with a few simple tools and a lot of time, TLC, and some effort, you can private label at home yourself if you are trying to save that coin. But another thing too is you wanna add the overall cost of what it 
takes to private label to your product. For me, private labeling costs anywhere from $2 to $3. So if you buy something like this bodysuit that I use in one of my videos for $12, you wanna add maybe $3 for shipping and maybe $3 for private labeling, as well as the bags that you use, the tissue that you use, and the stickers. So if this was me selling this product, I would say the cost of this item is actually $18, and then you wanna add anywhere from $10 to $15 to that price and sell that item on your store to also give you wiggle room if you do have any sales or if you have buy one get one 50 percent off or if you're running any other advertisement that would basically give an additional discount and the final thing that i use to basically generate all of my sales was just instagram and now i use facebook so i basically saved this one for last because it's the most obvious but using instagram for influencer marketing. I myself at the time when I started my store was my own influencer and that's actually how I basically grew my platform organically by consistently posting a lot of outfit pictures and it so happened to be that I was selling the outfits that I was wearing. So basically what I would do is I would just go out, hang out with my best friends for the day, take pictures of me and my outfits, put them on my website and then I would generate sales like that. Now social media has increased to a whole different level to where you can use Facebook for ads. You have the swipe up feature in Instagram that generates a lot of sales and makes your conversion rate go up just because it's easy access to the exact product link. Scaling your influencer reach by using other influencers, whether they be your friends or just having a consistent strategy of making sure that you have one influencer post a week on your feed. And yeah, that's basically the different tools that I use to grow my business to scale it to $10,000 a month. If you guys have any questions um, or you guys want more depth in the video, go ahead and put down some suggestions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. And don't forget, if you guys do need more tips and more help on marketing, don't forget to check out Audible and you guys can get your first audiobook for free when you go to www.audible.com slash findguru or you can text findguru to 500-500. Thank you so much and I will see you in my next upload.